Hey guys, Stanford here with fun. Today I'm with Team 8033 Highlander Robotics. I've got Vaughn, Alana, Louie here. We're gonna be going through some of the really, really slick stuff they got on this robot. Under the bumper intake, their amp mechanism, shooter, vision solutions, their funky wheels for their drivetrain, which I think is pretty cool. So stay tuned for all that and more in another episode of Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions. Support Fun's content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and Fun members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. So this is our um, under the bumper intake. We began a lot by prototyping over the bumper intakes, but we found that the under the bumper packaged a lot better. And so we're using silicone rollers, uh, or one silicone roller in the front, and then we have two um, polycarbonate rollers that don't have silicone on them because we have, we have centering wheels that center it. We found if they all had silicone that um, it wouldn't slide, like it wouldn't center. And so basically when it goes in, it goes up through these rollers here, and then um, it comes up here and we, can, we have a pretty large intake radius. So then we use these centering wheels to bring it so that it goes into the center, and then it's able to transfer into our amp mech. And we decided under the bumper is really good because it's very fast. We don't have to deploy it and we just kind of turn it on. There were some durability concerns with the under the bumpers a lot of teams have been having. So one thing that we did have to do was um, add the quarter inch scab plate. Um, and we still have managed to bend these. So uh, if you are a team running in bumper intake like this, uh, definitely make sure that you uh, stiffen in the bar. Uh, so why don't we go ahead and demo it? All right, and then uh, go ahead and talk about your climber that you guys use. So we have a cascade rigged um, elevator right here. So you can see um, we have hooks right here that grab onto the chain, and there's one on this side too. And so we're able to grab onto the chain like this. Um, but an issue that we found at SFR was that um, once we grabbed the chain and we would pull ourselves up, um, after the match ended, we would fall down again. And so we added this lock that you can see over here. And there's a servo right here, which pulls it out of the way. Um, and then once the ele once we're, we enable our climb, we extend, and then um, this thing gets released and it's on a rubber band. So we don't have to match the timing of the extend and the release. So then the second that our elevator comes down, there's just a small spacer and it just attaches onto that. Um, and it just gets locked on. And so now whenever we climb, we can stay up afterwards. So this is, this is how we start our climb. And then we're extended and then so then we pull it down and the latch grabs onto the spacer. And then now, if you look, you can't pull it up. It would never come up because it, it just keeps it on. That's cool. That's one of the more uh, innovative things I've seen to help with these uh, elevator climbs. So let's go and talk about some of the other uh, awesome stuff on this robot. So yeah, let's talk about the amp mech. Um, when we were prototyping, we spent a lot of time trying to shoot into the amp. And while we realized it was probably feasible, we thought it would be very advantageous to have that extra tolerance where you might not have to be at right up against the wall in order to score into it. So that's why we designed an amp mech that can score downwards. Uh, it was also intended to do the trap, although we later determined that this was just uh, not really in the cards for us uh, with how our geometry ended up working out. So the amp mech is able to hold a ring. It's quite large laterally, and by bending the ring, it can hold a ring uh, entirely within it. So we'll go ahead and demo that. So once the ring is in there like that, we're able to extend, uh, and then we can shoot downward into the amp. Uh, and this has been working out really well for us in matches. Yeah, it's definitely one of the most uh, effective amp mechanisms that I've seen. Uh, it's really nice to have that kind of positive engagement with the, uh, with the amp. Yeah. So um, when we want to shoot, we use the amp mechanism as uh, part of our routing, and we go ahead and pass the ring all the way through it. Um, so we can transfer after the fact if we want to. Uh, and once the ring is in here, um, we're able to aim the shooter up to any angle. Um, for example, we'll do our fixed feeder shot here. Um, and then when we uh, go ahead and fire, uh, just we'll shoot out like that. So we did split the two sides of the flywheels 
because we found in our prototyping that having a small amount of spin is very advantageous uh, for a stable shot, especially from long distance. Uh, and it's been working out very well for us. We were happy to see that we kind of uh, nailed the meta shooter in our prototyping. All right, cool. And let's go and go through some of the uh, software that makes this whole machine run. So from a hardware perspective, uh, we do have only two cameras and the Vision itself is running off an Orange Pi, uh, which is tucked down there. It runs Photon Vision and I would highly recommend it. Uh, but to explain how all that works, I'm going to pass it off to Louis. Hi, I'm Louis. So our camera system this year uh, was really a development from last year. Last year we tried to use Limelight 2 Pluses to run our Vision and we just found that it didn't have enough performance to get an accurate pose estimate. This year we've moved to using Ardu cams and an Orange Pi and it's been super reliable for us. Uh, we haven't had to do too much tuning on the final robot to get a really nice, consistent pose estimate that we've uh, really enjoyed using. So we have two right here. Uh, we're running mounts that were designed by 6328 early season and haven't really had any issues with them. They're just very nicely designed. Um, we've got our orange pie really tucked away in there. Uh, this has uh, had a very nice field of view for us and has worked out really nice, especially at our home practice space where we only have the speaker tags available to us. We've still been able to get a consistent pose estimate, which has helped us, especially as we've seen field issues uh, with uh, the stages drifting and such throughout this season. Um, on the software side, we have had to do a little bit of extra work in our code base because we've really been trying to leverage Advantage Kit this year. Uh, Photon Vision, by default, isn't super uh, built to use Advantage Kit, but with a little bit of custom plumbing, we're able to have a really nice uh, logged uh, vision stack, which means that it's a lot easier for us to look back at what exactly was going on with our vision towards the uh, after the match and let us tune it later. This logging has been super helpful for other things as well. Advantage Kit lets us log pretty much everything that happens in the robot. We've used this for everything from debugging comms issues to figuring out why our drivetrain was driving funny at our first event to uh, like tuning vision, like I said. And it's been a super helpful tool uh, that we've started using this season. Um, other libraries that we've started leveraging this season include Corio. Uh, you can see up on my screen here, um, we have a, the Corio app open. We put in a bunch of work to develop Corio in the off season, uh, along with 6995 and some other teams. Uh, this has helped us have super consistent and reliable and repeatable paths that we were not able to get when using Path Planner in uh, last year. We started using this at the off season and were the first team to run at HIV Champs last year, and I've been super happy with it. So you can see some of our autos here. Uh, it's worked out very well for us this season. Um, here we also have a one of our logs from a practice match from yesterday. You can see the robot's pose in the field as well as its pose estimate updates from the cameras. Uh, so see the robot shoot up there, go over to pick up its piece, and it gets a view of a tag there and just nicely moving throughout our auto uh, and reliably syncing those shots in uh, to the speaker. All right, before we finish up, let's go ahead and talk about these wheels that are on this robot. So um, one of the things that we've seen this year, I think, is that you really want to choose whether you're going to be a light and fast robot or um, a much heavier and kind of uh, tanky robot. And that's why we did choose to lower our gearing to L3 for this competition. Um, but one of the things that comes with running uh, more torquey gearing is that you want to be able to push people around. And so um, we're running TPU printed wheels uh, and we've been very happy with these. They last uh, about 10 to 12 matches for us. Um, and they get significantly more grip than uh, any of the other options. We run these hubs printed both in Onyx and in TPU, and we've never had an issue with them. We've been running the same four hubs for like two years. So I'd highly recommend these uh, as a great option if you want to increase your traction, especially if you have a heavier robot. Um, the only thing I would caution against is doing a long sessions of practice. Uh, if they get hot, they can get soft, and then uh, that's what can happen. So. Great for matches, maybe not so great for five or six hours of practice. Cool, all right. All right, guys, so thank you very much for allowing us to come by and see this amazing robot. I'm competing here at Orange County this weekend. Um, these guys have been amazing. Definitely go watch some of their matches. So thank you so much and good luck out there on the field. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions.